And uh, it's, it's, so the plans haven't changed that much. In one respect, yes. Uh, when Nixon, uh, well, the plans in those days included both for first strike and for second strike under Eisenhower, hitting every city in Russia and China uh, and actually causing with radioactive fallout and other things, 600 million casualties, nearly all civilian, obviously. Multigenocide, not omnicide yet, just 600 million, except that we now know that those same attacks on cities uh, deliberately would have caused firestorms that would have in fact been a doomsday machine. Okay, under Nixon, when he signed the genocide convention, finally, very belatedly, uh, decided that having targets listed as cities, Leningrad, uh, Moscow, cities per se, which is what we did do along with military targets, didn't fit well with the genocide convention. So they took off cities per se. They only hit military targets in cities or near them, the same cities, essentially. As many people have testified on these plans later, including people like the, for, the first head of strategic command, last head of strategic air command, uh, General Lee Butler, George Lee Butler, they just hadn't changed. Uh, even Cheney was a this is interesting. Cheney was appalled at the number of weapons landing on Moscow, which is something you won't believe this, but it's something like 158 uh, on Moscow, not on Moscow per se, just on the command and control centers and the various retreats for the cadre, you know, and so forth, the air defenses, ABLM, and so forth. The effect of nuclear winter is unchanged by this. So the answer then is where now we just say that these weapons are for preemption, for damage limiting, that's the inside term for what they're doing, limiting damage in the event of a nuclear war, which it won't do against Russia or China. You don't need that uh, against a non-nuclear state, but against Russia or China, you can't limit damage. So we're going back to this Reagan-Gorbachev uh, effect, a nuclear war cannot be won, talking now about US and Russia, right, and must not be fought, right. But they did not agree in 1986, is I think when they said that, should not be prepared for, should not be threatened, should not be risked. And we're doing all of that till still, till today. So for, for Biden and Putin to reaffirm that particular statement is good, better than rejecting it, but it's very far from uh, affecting the arms race. Say, must not be fought, uh, must not, cannot be won. Yes, but uh, Lockheed needs the jobs, um, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, we need to be able to hit every Russian missile. No, we don't, because it doesn't make any difference in, uh, in, the, in the war. And as I say, the other states aren't trying to do that. I don't know if India and Pakistan are trying to disarm each other of nuclear weapons but they should know they can't. You know, we've got mobile weapons here, mobile missiles are hidden in various places. North Korea, by the way, has an enormous uh, web of tunnels under which, that's why we don't know how many weapons they have. We don't know where they are. We can't disarm North Korea and uh, an attack on North Korea, which John Bolton unashamedly promoted in various administrations and was even fired for it by Trump eventually, wants war with North Korea. Well, that annihilates South Korea and uh, parts of Japan, large parts of Japan, a lot of other parts of the world, and probably, look, okay, say one more thing. Putin has trumpeted this, what he calls Poseidon, with its uh, drone torpedo, which, you know, totally uh, wipes out ABM possibilities. It comes up near a port and creates this thing. Okay, now others have said it's not 200 megatons. It's only 20 megatons or even two megatons, whatever. Uh, a drone a drone missile with a warhead is, is not a good thing to exist in the world. It's, it's against our ABM. But uh, does North Korea, so that means if we hit Moscow and destroy Putin, can we prevent it? Which our plans absolutely still call for. To me, even when I was working inside as a Cold Warrior, decapitating 
a state without being able to destroy all of its nuclear weapons has always been insane. You know, it's all insane, but this is of a higher dimension of insane somehow to leave all these weapons out there with undestroyed without anybody to tell them to stop. Like the Japanese emperor was able to, uh, to uh, tell his forces to stop when Groves wanted to kill him instead with the first, second or third nuclear weapon. And had we done so, how we'd be fighting Japanese here and there in islands and caves as long as Afghanistan, you might say. Okay, so I would make this point, but they, they want to decapitate. Okay, we definitely have plans and have described them for decapitating Kim. In, I mean, not only his head, he does that sort of thing to his rivals, but uh, to wipe him out. Um, what is the chance in my mind, having been with this for a long time, that he has, by the way, we have special forces directly for that purpose, and cruise missiles and other plans to decapitate North Korea. What's the chance that they have not made provision for that as Soviet Union did with a system they called the dead hand, which assured that if Moscow was destroyed, that the missiles would be able to fire, just like us. And uh, North Korea hasn't done that. All they have to have is a boat right now in San Francisco Harbor with it. It doesn't even have to be a warhead, a device uh, aboard to be set off if Kim is out of communications and there appears to have been an attack on him. Uh, Saddam Hussein made uh, arrangements like that, by the way, it's, it's another story. So and in short, any of these people can uh, make provision to be in, uh, unprecedentedly destructive of any attacker. And under those situations to continue to preserve a machinery capable of, of a hair trigger here that can go off and destroy it is, as I say, insane. But that doesn't mean it's inhuman. Humans are, all of them are capable of being in some ways crazy. And uh, not only revengeful and impulsive and all that, but really to make plans for crazy, crazy, to have crazy beliefs.